Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave, and today we're looking at an acronym, IIFE. It stands for Immediately Invoked Function Expressions. Let's take a closer look. The acronym IIFE, Immediately Invoked Function Expressions, and the term was originally coined by Ben Allman, and he pronounces it IFE. He introduced the acronym, and I will put a link to his original blog post in the description below if you're curious about that. Now, there are some variations to IFEs, and the first one that you may see has the anonymous arrow function inside. So if we just break this part out that I've highlighted, you can see we have an anonymous arrow function, but it's contained inside parentheses and that contains the iffy and then the parentheses at the end the operators actually call it into action so it is easy to see one like this it has no name and it is instantly invoked or immediately invoked now the next variation you may see is essentially the same but it's not an arrow function it just uses the function keyword and otherwise it is exactly the same. And then a third variation you may see is actually an iffy with a name, and I just named this function my iffy, but it is immediately invoked. And here you can see I'm actually passing in a parameter and giving it a value in case the parameter is not provided. And this enables us to call the function again. So if we need an iffy with recursion, where the function actually calls itself, we can refer to the function by name within. After uh, it is executed though, outside of the function scope, you cannot call it again. It would only be able to be referred to by the name of the function inside the iffy, because after it is invoked, an iffy is no longer available. I'll go ahead and save this recursive function just in case you're curious. And you can see it counts to five and then delivers the message finished in the console at the end. This returns a ternary statement and it's the result of that ternary statement. So either it calls the function again, which is recursion, the function is calling itself, or it returns the message finished when the case is complete. And that is saying if the number is equal to five, that meaning this saying actually, if it's not equal to five, but if this is false, then it returns this portion. And if you're not familiar with ternary statements, I can provide a link to my tutorial on those as well. And I also have a tutorial on recursion, so I could link all of that below. There are several reasons for using ifies, and while this list is not inclusive, I will hit or all inclusive, I will touch on the most popular reasons for using an ify. That is, once again, an immediately invoked function expression. And the first reason is that it does not pollute the global object namespace. And that is in JavaScript, when we just define a variable and it's not in a function, it's not the property of an object, it's in the global namespace. And so here we have x equals a string whatever, and then we have an arrow function here called hello world, and it's they're both actually just in the global namespace. Now, if we were completing or working on a larger project, especially on a team, this can be very confusing, and that's why it is good to not pollute the global namespace or the global scope, if you will, because you can run into conflicts with names. If, if we tried to create another variable with the name of X, of course, we would have an error. The same goes with a function here. So let me go ahead and show you an example of isolating a declaration within the function. So we have X up here and the hello world function up here, but now we have an iffy, and inside that we've defined a variable x and a hello world function as well. And now if I am going to save this, it will be immediately invoked. And you see in the console, we have the iffy whatever value and the hello iffy return from our hello world function, not the values up here. And this is all about scope. If you're not familiar with scope, I do have a tutorial on that that I can link to below as well, or possibly give a link up above right now. Now, Besides this, if we go ahead and log to the console, the value of x 
and call the hello world function in a console log statement outside of our iffy, let's see what values we get when I save. Now we get the original whatever and hello world that we defined above in the global space below. And that's because uh, we have isolated these declarations. So they're only valid inside the curly braces here of our iffy function. But this creates a namespace, which can go on to our next reason and we can apply this namespace. Right now we have just really isolated these declarations, but we can get more creative and use these with a namespace. Actually, before we get to creating another namespace, we need to touch on the second reason, and that is simply to create private variables and methods from a closure. And if you're not familiar with the closure, I do have a tutorial on that as well, and I can link to that below. Right now, let's take a look at this iffy, an in immediately invoked function expression, and you can see we have it contained inside parentheses, and then we call it into action with the operator at the end, as the pattern for iffies are. But let's look at what this function does. We define a counter variable, and then let's go ahead and log the counter to confirm that the iffy is called into action. And then we define a function that says how many credits we have, and I'm passing in a number to this function right here. And then there's a return statement for this iffy as well, and it returns an anonymous function. And notice we increment counter, and then we pass the value of counter to this credits function. And you can see it has a parameter placeholder using num, but we can pass in any number value, and our counter is a number value. So what happens is this executes immediately, and so let's go ahead and save this much and look at the console. We just get the value of the counter. We do not get this credits function called into action. And really, we do not get this anonymous function called into action, although it is returned. So increment now holds the anonymous function. So the immediately invoked function expression, our iffy, is only called once, and now it is complete. But now let's go ahead and call increment, and I'll save. And now it calls our anonymous function into action, and it still has lexical scope to refer to the counter variable. And so this says I have one credit. And if we call increment again, and we save. Now it says I have two credits. So you can see counter is still able to increment. And so our anonymous function through the scope chain still has access to this private counter variable. And now if we try to access the counter variable directly or even the credits function directly, this would be a reference error because they're not available in the global scope. And you can see we get a reference error from trying to uh, call credits in the global scope. And again, closure can be hard to wrap your head around, and that is what I'm using here. So if you would like a deeper explanation of closure, I'll provide the link above right now and link to it in the description below. The third and final reason I'm covering today for using an iffy is the module pattern. Now modules were introduced in ES6 or ES2015, and so you don't see this used as often. However, in legacy code this could come up and you should be able to recognize it. So let's go ahead and look at an example. And I am actually creating an object that will be returned. As you can see, this function or this iffy returns an object. And so I have named it with a capital S, just as if I would create an object with EX6 classes. And now I inside this, I have a private variable inside the iffy function, and that is the count variable. And then I'm returning this object, but it will still have access, as in the last example with closure, to that private count variable. And so now if I save right now, we don't see anything. There's no console log statement here by the private variable as I used earlier as an example, but score will now have access to these methods 
returned in the object. So let's look at an example of that and we'll call score.increment as we see the method right here in the object and then we'll go ahead and log the value of score.current that should return the count. And now I'll save. And instead of the count being zero, the count is one because we incremented the count with the increment method and then we checked the current count. Let's go ahead and do that again. And now we'll be able to see the continued uh, increase in the value of count. And then once again, if we call instead of increment, we'll call reset, and now I'll save, and you can see in the console, we reset the value of count, and now when we get the current value through the current method, it is a zero. We're creating an object in a different way, but this is a module pattern that actually creates a namespace because these methods are referenced inside of the object, which is the score namespace. So we've created a module called score. Now let's look at a variation of the module pattern, and it is called the revealing pattern. And the main variation, let me go ahead and paste this, and our game object that is now being created with our iffy, uh, is very, very similar to the previous example. However, the methods are now defined in the private namespace, and as we return the object, we're just using pointers. So we set current equal to current, which is our current up here in the private definition area, if you will, of the iffy that we have that is instantly invoked. But this will work the same way as the previous example, but we're using pointers instead of defining these methods right inside the return object. So it's the revealing pattern is what this is called, and it's just a variation on the previous example. So now we can call game increment, and then I will log the current value. And I'll save, and we can see game score is one, which I changed the return of the current method just a little bit so we could see that it is different but this essentially works just like the previous score example we used, except this is the revealing pattern that uses pointers to the methods that are defined up here in the private area of the iffy that we're creating. And the final variation for today that we should discuss is injecting a namespace object. So this will be a lot like the previous examples, except notice we don't have a const definition for score or a game object right at the beginning of the iffy. So we just define the iffy and then we call it into action. However, there are a couple of differences we should note here. So let's break this down. We're passing in, we've got a namespace parameter right here. So we refer to the namespace parameter throughout as a namespace that we're actually passing in. So we pass in an object to this iffy. And then, of course, we're using namespace dot to set these different values, whether it is a property or a method. And now notice here, I'm not using an arrow function, I'm using the function keyword. And that is so I can use the keyword this inside of these methods and refer back to our object that we're creating here, or this namespace. And this namespace is window.app. Now, any object created in the global namespace area or the in the global scope is part of the window object. So that's why we have this. So this is the same really as saying const app equals and then just defining an empty object. So we have the short circuit here in case window app doesn't already exist that it will be equal to at least an empty object. Now let's go ahead and call this into action with app.increment because now the app exists. And then let's log to the console once again, the current, and we'll have the current app count here. So I'll save this and we get app count is one because we incremented that. And we could call the reset method and just like the previous examples, except now realize that we're injecting an object or you could say we're injecting a namespace and then we're applying 
these properties and methods to it. So another variation there. And this may take you a while to wrap your head around all these examples. So work through them, change them up, uh, look, look at what you can do to understand them and with variations of the code and just try it out for yourself. If you have questions, please post below. I'm happy to respond. And of course, thank you so much for subscribing and liking my content. And I'll talk to you guys again very soon.